Joining us for our Emmys documentary panel today is Nanette Burstein from Hillary. Nanette, thank you for being here. Um, I know uh, Hillary Clinton's campaign had filmed thousands of hours of footage uh, four years ago. So when did you come into the picture? I came in in 2018, which was a year and a half after the whole campaign. Um, and I inherited this asset, which I knew very little what you know it actually uh, entailed other than there is this bunch of footage, but I can't tell you really what's in there. Um, but right away, I did not want to make a film about the campaign. I felt like it was too raw and too soon. And more than that, I felt that there was a, a story that was much more important to me to tell, which was the scope of her life. And suddenly I had this entree to this woman that I thought was, you know, an incredible figure in American history. And I could present this bigger story to tell, incorporating this footage, but broadening it out to tell the story of her life, which ultimately uh, encompassed the arc of the women's movement uh, as well as our history of partisan politics. So that was my goal from pretty early on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and it uh, covers, you know, two big timelines, basically. It goes over, like, her life, and then you weave in uh, material from the campaign over the course of, I think, a year. So how, what was it like mining through all that footage and deciding, like, where to go weave in and out of both timelines? Yeah, you know, I mean, there was a lot of footage. There was thousands of hours and uh, and no one really knew quite what was in there. So it took four months of an entire editing team to go through it and really see what was there while I was figuring out the content of this show in general, the series, the film, whatever it was going to be. Um, and... And so we made we made selects over that period, and also I figured out the you know what I wanted to tell a story on in the broader piece, and so um, it became clear that there were certain standout moments um, that we wanted to include for various reasons, a lot of which were you know this is really telling not about 2016, but as about Hillary Clinton as a person. Uh, either as far as her personality goes or, um, or as far as like a bigger picture of who she is and what she represents as, a, as opposed to like this moment and getting into the rabbit hole of the 2016 election. I mean, there was footage and a bunch of it that was left in the cutting room floor that would be much more inside baseball if you were doing a campaign film. So it was really about what is important to tell her story as a person and a political figure over the last 50 years. Mm -hmm. Well, she's also such a polarizing figure. There's a faction of people who think they know everything about her. And then on the opposite end, there's people who think like, oh, she's too distant and closed off. She needs to open up more. So yeah. how like, conscious were you of like those disparate feelings when putting everything together and interviewing her? No, I was absolutely conscious of that. And that's really why I felt this footage was important because she was thought of as so guarded. Like this was footage where she was very unguarded and, and it was filmed in a way that they never thought it would be seen in a broader context. It was just filmed for the campaign. Maybe they'd use some, maybe they wouldn't. At the time they had control over it. So there was uh, openness to the whole thing. Um, and then, you know, even just in my questioning or how I frame the story is like, Okay, here's this woman who's one of the most well-known political or historical women over the last 50 years, and yet people think they don't know who she is. They feel like she's guarded. And so, you know, that was my first question of the whole series, in fact. Like, people say they know who you are, but yet they don't know who you are. And, and why is that? And, uh, and that's kind of the, the framework of, like, why... Why don't we know who you are? Why why do you seem so guarded? So it was so much of the story had to do with that ultimately. Mm. Was it difficult getting her to open up? Because um, uh, you talked to her for a, a week, right? Is that correct? I talked to her over seven days. It wasn't a yeah, week okay. straight, actually. It was it was three days and then three days and then a day at the very end um, for various reasons. That wasn't 
extremely well planned out, but it just sort of ended up that way. But um, yeah, I mean, you know, she was um, more guarded in the beginning, like a lot of people are. And, and, and look, you know, you have like decades of scar tissue to pull back. <laughs> <laughs> which makes it even harder. So um, the second time I went to interview her and she was amazing, like by, especially by the second day of the second time. So I guess it's by the, like the fourth or fifth day. And, uh, and then when I went back and asked her all the other questions that I, you know, felt like I didn't get, you know, as, as uh, not, I didn't get great responses, but she was just in the zone. Um, if anyone, you know, has made films, you know what I mean? And, um, and then it was just, it was a delight. Like I just got this whole other side of her, but it, you know, it, t it took time and I was really fortunate that she was willing to, to give me that time and opportunity to, uh, get someone who's been so guarded for so many years, for so many reasons, which I've included in the series to open up like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, I really liked her candor um, when she talked about like how she regretted uh, being on uh, Bill's um, healthcare task force. Like she's like that, I should not have read that. And I don't think she's ever talked about that before or admitted that, right? No, so I was shocked because I got really inside baseball of studying this whole thing, like all the various minutia, which I didn't include because it would bore everyone other than the geeky person I was of like all the things that she could have done differently or should have done differently. And, you know, should have, could have, what a, but so I asked her like, what mistakes do you think you made? And then like, it was just, it shocked me that she was like, I shouldn't have done it. I shouldn't have been the head of it. I just created too much noise. I could have supported it, you know, but I shouldn't have been, the the person to lead the trail because it obviously it, it stopped it from happening because they were upset that I was doing it and you know it made sense but it was it was it was quite the admission and I I was I was like wow okay mm -hmm. so. well it it seemed like um uh, the Monica Lewinsky whole affair that probably seemed like it was the hardest word to open up on but I was surprised that Bill was so candid about it and he gave a really great answer when you asked about like why would you risk something like that and he gave this he went a completely different direction to explain like it's not about risk so what was it like talking to both of them about that whole event well first of all it's hard to ask uh such public figures that you you know you respect and you're still obviously doing a documentary, but that's what's hard is to ask them about these personal things that they know is hard to discuss. And they haven't openly because they worry about every word they say is going to be examined six ways till Tuesday. And I get that, but they, I don't know. I just was able to establish a rapport with both of them that ultimately they were able to speak quite freely and, and give these unvarnished answers. But yes, it was incredibly incri intimidating for me to, you know, ask the former president of the United States about how did you screw up so badly with your life and your marriage and your presidency? Like that's a hard thing to do. But mm -hmm. um, Obviously it ends sort of with the, the results of the election. Uh, and like you said before, it's still raw, still very recent. So the, how, how did you go about uh, deciding like how much you wanted to incorporate and cover in that? Because I, I felt like you could have done a whole lot more covering the election, but you just kind of focus on like the last month, like the October surprise and everything. Yeah, I mean, I, I focus on the whole milieu. I mean, you know, it's funny, like in, in the election footage, there's not a lot that happens. And once they get to the general election um, between the convention, which is really not exciting from a background point of view until October. So there wasn't a lot to show, but a lot of it was dictated by like, I don't want to unpack this whole election. That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to show who she is and what's important in the 16 election that relates to who she is. And it was this constant battle because it's so easy to get inside all of these various fascinating things that happened in that year. And you're always um, really having a hard time choosing of like, where are you go with that? but I was very cautious not to get too inside of it. You know, it, 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 it was a structure that was created because A, it is this ultimate moment of her life and, and it is this thing we're still grappling with as a culture um, and is the ultimate failure of like what happens to a woman that tries to 
be the top dog and why did it fail so badly? Um, but it was also, it was about this unvarnished footage of her. Like that was really the great interest to me. Um, so I didn't want to get too, I don't, I didn't want to relitigate 16 too much, but I had to do it somewhat. So mm -hmm. that was always the, the question mark that was uh, pervading our in, in, in edit rooms. And uh, it was, it was always tough to make those decisions. Mm -hmm. Well, it does end on a hopeful note, I guess you could say, because you talk, you know, it, it covers her impact on the women's movement and her loss for the women's march. And then we got all these uh, young female candidates running for office. And, you know, the primary season we had more female candidates than ever, but we still ended up with two establishment white males. Yeah. So how did working on this documentary and talking to her color um, your view of the election this year? Well, you know, I mean, while I was making it, a lot of really optimistic things happened. The, the midterm elections happened right before my first interview with him, where, where, or with her, where, where when many women were elected into Congress and the Senate, and that was incredibly exciting. Um, and, uh, you know, when I, by the time I left picture, there were several, still several female candidates in play for the presidency, Whereas up until that point, there had only been her ever as a real female contender. So I, I still felt it was really optimistic. Now, obviously, by the time I was finished, by the time this film came out, I think like two, you know, a day or two days later, Elizabeth Warren was the last female candidate to drop out. Regardless of that, I still feel that, you know, look, change is incremental. And the fact that there were so many women that ran is a huge change. And yes, it's upsetting that, you know, no woman was the female nominee, but you have to still, I'm still celebratory that there were like four or five real, you know, strong candidates that were running as women. And we still have to look at, well, why didn't they win? What was the bias and examine all of that. But I still um, am very, optimistic compared to you know zero to one which is what it used to be yeah it'll take a long time <laughs> it's, it's a long maybe. Yeah. maybe it will I'm all right well nanette it was great speaking with you thank you so much for your time and we'll see you back here in a little bit okay thank you so much